Uh, I'm Jay Flatman. I'm a lecturer at University College uh, London, the Institute of Archaeology here at University College. Uh, I am a specialist in maritime archaeology and uh, about a year and a half ago now I guest edited uh, a special volume of Conservation and Management of Archaeological Sites. Here is my guest volume, uh, a, a main journal. This is not your average, very academic journal uh, volume at all. What I asked a series of contributors to do was debate by email uh, various different topics they saw as being very important in the conservation and management of marine archaeological sites. Uh, and these were people who were academics, but they were also people working in industry, in the oil and gas industry, in the aggregates industry, uh, people who work for government, people who work uh, for all sorts of organisations, uh, in, in one case even a diplomat who is a specialist in a particular form of maritime law. Uh, and so they came together and rather than have very long detailed papers, they each wrote about a thousand words uh, on a topic I'd given them and they effectively debated how we are going about managing the conservation and management of marine archaeological sites uh, in the 21st century. This is a very important topic right now uh, for a whole variety of different reasons. We've got internal factors uh, to do with how people are using the seas and oceans more and more uh, as an area of industry and business. And we've got external factors to do with things like climate change. To do with the first of those, the marine zone is now an area of unprecedented industrial development. There's traditional things like oil and gas exploration and pipelines and simply the amount of ships traveling around the world with all of their different cargoes. And so that is putting an enormous strain upon the oceans and its, its heritage uh, of all sorts of different types. There is then a whole different side of uh, the marine zone and in this case we've got issues such as climate change. People traditionally think of climate change and the marine environment as being something which is very much a natural environment problem. It's to do with loss of biodiversity, it's to do with animals struggling in new warmer environments, it's to do with things like the melting of the ice caps. Uh, this is certainly one very important side of, of the climate change debate, but another side is the fact that uh, cultural heritage is very much under risk. We have a lot of things like uh, increasing coastal erosion, so archaeological sites on the foreshore are being flooded, they're being destroyed in very big storms. We're seeing greater incidents of things like storminess, uh, heavy tidal surges, coastal flooding, and that's impacting upon archaeological sites as well. The other side is things like the melting of the ice caps and how that is impacting upon the indigenous peoples of the polar areas in particular, where their way of life, their language, their culture and their art, all of those things are, are being destroyed uh, or put under threat by climate change. So all of these are some of the issues we're dealing with in this volume of conservation and management of archaeological sites. I got the contributors to talk about uh, about five different particular areas they were concerned about. One of these is the very traditional side of maritime archaeology, is what most people think of maritime archaeology, which is historic shipwrecks. There are millions of shipwrecks all around the world uh, and they have been explored for hundreds of years. Now one of the interesting things is that traditionally we only went to shipwrecks in relatively shallow water, down to about 50 to 60 metres. Now new industries and new technologies means we are going to see shipwrecks in ever deeper waters and there isn't really a shipwreck anywhere in the world which, which isn't accessible through some sort of technology. So there are new questions about how we deal with and manage uh, those shipwrecks in particular, how people gain access to them uh, as a form of tourism or, or cultural heritage. Another very different side of conserving marine archaeological sites uh, is the management of submerged prehistoric sites. These are not sites which are traditionally well known by the general public or even by academics alike. They are sites which were originally dry land settlements in prehistory, which subsequently became submerged through long-term processes of environmental change and which are now underwater. They were not sites which were very well studied up until about 10 or 15 years ago when archaeologists started working much more closely with industry. 
marine industries like the oil and gas industry, also the aggregate uh, industry e exploring for things like sand and gravels for use in road construction and things like that on land, had started to pick up in their surveys evidence of very, very extensive prehistoric landscapes in areas like the Southern North Sea. Uh, and about 10 years ago, thanks to organisations like English Heritage and, and through government schemes such as the Aggregates Levy Sustainability Fund, uh, that industry started working much more closely with archaeologists to really map and understand these sites. This is a, a fantastic and fruitful relationship that literally uh, archaeologists now work so much more closely with marine industry and marine industry, industry with archaeologists and everyone gets something out of that. The archaeologists get access to new data and the marine aggregates producers in particular get a much better understanding of what archaeological sites there are and more importantly how they might avoid or help manage those archaeological sites. So this is something else that this uh, addition of conservation and management of archaeological sites dealt with. The final section that this uh, journal deals with, which I want to briefly mention, is questions of legislation and policy management. There are all sorts of initiatives nowadays to see how nations around the world work, might work better in collaboratively managing marine archaeological sites. In particular, there's something called the United Nations Convention on the Protection of Underwater Cultural Heritage, which uh, is an international meeting of all those nations who have any interest in any way of protecting and managing marine archaeological sites to see how we can't share resources, share skills, uh, and lead to a better understanding, a better public engagement in marine archaeological sites. So this special edition of, of conservation and management of archaeological sites covers a whole range of all of the different issues to do how we are managing now and a long time into the future marine archaeological resources.